Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari, and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. And it was kind of inspired by some things I saw online with some trans YouTubers, um, including one that I really love, where they were getting a lot of flack, basically, for saying they wouldn't change who they are. And uh, so it seems like, you know, if you hate being trans, you have those people who are going to be detractors and... If you love being trans, then you've got those people who say, well, that means you're not dysphoric enough because, you know, apparently we have the gatekeepers, even within the trans community, who want to measure how miserable you are. Because if you don't, if your misery doesn't reach at least this tall, you can't ride this trans ride. Which is absurd, but, um, you know, I know it's a controversial topic. And that's exactly why I decided to hell with it. I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, are there things to hate about being trans? Yes. There is physical dysphoria. There is social dysphoria. Both of which really suck. And you know, the fact of the matter is, is that dysphoria can be crippling for a lot of people. You know, I know I can be having a great day, and I catch a view of something in the mirror, and in my head, it flags as masculine. And then I know I'm going to spend the rest of my day probably in bed because it's ruined it. But we all have different experiences. Our dysphoria is related to different things. Our dysphoria you know, may not be about the same thing or may not be to the same intensity. And even then, your dysphoria about the same things differ all based on, you know, your situation. For example, the biggest thing I had dysphoria over before, well, a month and a half ago, was my chest. I had my surgery, which I'm very happy about. But it helped me with my chest, but it allowed my brain to just focus even more on my bottom dysphoria. And my bottom dysphoria, frankly, got worse after. There are, you know, it, it's naturally that dysphoria is something that very much so I hate about being trans. Social anxiety, definitely a thing to hate. You know, I can't leave the house without double checking every single thing about me to make for, make sure I feel that I am sufficiently passable. And no, I'm not saying that you have to be, quote, passing. I'm talking about that game that you play in your head where you're always questioning, am I passable? And then when you go out into the store or go out into the community or to your job or whatever the situation is, you know, even then I'll have those times to where... I'm talking to someone, but as I'm walking away, I'm questioning, did they notice anything? Did anything out me in that conversation? Then you have HRT, or hormone replacement therapy, and for a lot of us, that is really a love-hate relationship. I love the effects. I'm very happy with the effects, but, you know, taking seven pills a day between my estrogen, my spironolactone, my progesterone. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating. It, it's hard to, it's something I have to remember. And then if we're talking about Spiro, you know, let's talk about the 8 million bathroom breaks that you have to take when you're on it because of its diuretic effect. Then there's also transphobia. Um, misconceptions, misunderstandings about what it means to be trans. All of these are things to hate. Being told you're going to hell just because you're being yourself. 
definitely something to hate. Being misgendered, those are all great things to hate. They are worthy of your hate. Not to mention the 500 questions you get whenever someone finds out that you're trans, and a big portion of them being incredibly inappropriate. You know, all of a sudden you're just saying hello to someone, and because they found out, you're having to tell them, well, when did you know? Does your family know? How did they take the news? Are your boobs real? Are you having bottom surgery? When are you going to have bottom surgery? It's frustrating. So, obviously, I could go on and on. But there are also things that I love. You know, I'm proud of myself for standing up for myself and being who I truly feel that I am. You know, I love the opportunity that I get to hopefully do my little part to make it better for the next generation of trans people by speaking out. I love the sense of community that we share a lot within the trans community, that bonding of a common factor. We, we may all have different backgrounds, but at least we have this baseline understanding of this shared experience, and that really has this ability to open dialogue. I love the fact that being trans has forced me to examine my life and to get to know myself better and to understand, you know, my body and my brain so much better in the process. And in that, because of how I felt, it's helped me to have more compassion for marginalized communities. Honestly, I can't tell you if I hate it or if I love it. There's a lot about my life that would have been easier if I weren't trans. You know, I would have loved to have been able to have had kids and a family and that so-called normal life. But I also don't know who I would be if I wasn't the me that I am right now. I'm sure as hell not happy with dysphoria. I'm not fully satisfied with where I'm at in my transition or my body. But overall, I'm happy with who I am. So what ifs? Going through playing these what if games. What if you could be cis? What if you... You know, there's some interesting places for your mind to go. But at the end of the day, they change absolutely nothing. If you love being trans, if you hate being trans, or if you're like me and you just have no damn clue how you feel about it most days, it doesn't change the fact that we still are who we are. We can't do anything about that. We are trans. And playing around with the what ifs and then getting pissed because someone else doesn't share your experience is juvenile. It is damaging to the trans community where we need unity and it just doesn't help the situation at all. You know, all we can do, love it or hate it, is do our best to have the happiest, most fulfilling life that we possibly can. That's what our goal has to be, not what if I were cis or do I hate being trans or am I dysphoric enough? What's making you happy? What's giving you a chance at feeling happiness, contentment with who you are? That's what's important. And if someone else can't understand that, if someone else thinks that you are not trans enough because you haven't suffered enough for their level, like we have to have a public flogging in order to be trans enough, you just need to tell those people to piss off and get away because that is toxic. That is poison. Not only for you personally, but that is poison for the entire trans community. We have to be united. We get enough people tearing us down from outside our community. It's time that we take a little bit of time to build one another up. So anyway, that is my video for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the little bell so that you know um, when new videos are uploaded. And let's see here. Leave your comments for suggestions on future videos. Let me know what you want to see on the channel. I'll end with my quote from Kesha. 
Don't let the bastards get you down. Hold your head up high. Be yourself. Be proud of who you are. And enjoy life, dysphoria or not. Well, that's pretty much it. Based on my one comment I had where somebody gave me a hate comment and called my hands man hands. So, me and my man hands will wave goodbye to you and have a great day, guys. Lots of love. Mm -hmm.